even mention that we have H&R Block numbers coming out any moment. Now, Larry Shover is in the center of the action today at the CME Group. Hank Smith is bullish on stocks, says there's no money to be made in fixed income. But Jim Cohan says treasuries may be bust, but there are other opportunities in bonds. He's got some specific names. Hank and Jim will go head to head in just a couple of minutes. But let's start with Larry Shover at the CME. Larry, we're about to get H&R Block. I know you're prepped for that. But first, let's talk about oil. Because oil was all over the place today. At first, it looked like it was going to go down to 77. Then it gained a little strength. It went up and down over the flat line about four or five times. What's going on with crude? Well, with crude right now, I think a lot of people are on the sidelines. Even though that foolish report came down that stocks were drawn down, I don't think traders know how to make sense of all the headline risk that's coming out of Europe and also the offsetting data that we had in the United States with the Schiller report offset by the Fed Richmond uh, manufacturing report. Nobody knows what to do with oil right now. That's why it's snapping back and forth in a very tight range. Larry, I don't know why this isn't good news. I mean, oil lower, gasoline lower, more money in the consumer's pocket. We might then, according to, say, for example, Ian Shepardson, chief economist of High Frequency Economics, saying this eventually will turn uh, consumer confidence around to the upside because people will then have money to spend. Yeah, and actually some of this about oil is actually fundamentals, convention. We have to throw that out the window right now because I think the market's looking for something credible, something desirable out of Thursday and Friday's meetings. I think they might be disappointed, but it does filter down to the oil markets. That's the bottom line. I wouldn't look at convention or fundamentals right now. Larry Shover, stand by. We're going to see you in a couple of minutes when the S&P futures Thank close. You. All right, so you saw that stocks finished higher today despite concerns over Europe's debt crisis. In fact, independent ratings agency Egan Jones downgraded Germany just before 3 p.m. Eastern. Is there still money to be made in stocks, or should investors really be looking for safety? Let's bring in Hank Smith, Haverford Trust Company Chief Investment Officer, and Jim Cohan, Wells Fargo Chief Fixed Income Strategist. They may not fight, but they have different views on all this. First of all, <laughs> Hank, it's, it's the second half of the year we're all focused on right now. We had so many miscues about the first half. At first, we thought we were going great guns. Then it became clear there was a slowdown, uh, whether it was in part or wholly because of what's happening overseas is beyond, beside the point. What's, what's going to happen in the second year? Is there any chance we could pull out a win? Well, I think so. Look, we just titled our uh, summer outlook deja vu. We've seen this... Uh, seen now for the third consecutive year in a row a uh, summer, spring summer uh, soft patch followed by firming economic data in the second half um, and look the economy is still expanding it's not contracting profits are still rising they're not falling valuations are very attractive balance sheets are exceptional uh, this if that was all the information you were given you would probably be a buyer of stocks today not a seller Jim Cohen, you're not a buyer of stocks, you're a buyer of fixed income. Which part and why? Well, some areas of fixed income, in particularly the, uh, the high-yield corporate bond market and some areas of the municipal bond market. We agree with Hank in terms of the outlook for the economy. Uh, and if we're right, then treasuries don't have very much value at these very low yield levels. But uh, we should be investing in the second half of the year for coupon income. That worked pretty well in the first half, and we think that that's the way to go. That's the strategy to be preferred during the, the second half of the year. And you don't get very much coupon income in treasuries. Jim, when you say um, municipals, do they have to be triple, double A rated, or will you go so far as doing a single A or a B? No, as a matter of fact, we would recommend going to the single A, triple B area of the municipal market. The triple A's and the double A's, the yields are relatively low. low yeah. Quality spreads in the municipal market are very wide, so you really get paid to own single A, triple B credits. All right, Hank, uh, we tried to pick a fight between you two guys. I guess it's not going to work <laughs> out. So let's get right to your picks. We got some good picks from Jim on fixed income. Let's go right to the stocks here. Union Pacific. Why, oh, why, if you don't think the economy is going great gangbusters, would you go for Union Pacific? Well, uh, look, all the industrials, with the exception of Union Pacific, have had bear market uh, pullbacks here, like a Caterpillar, uh, for, for example, right. or an Eaton. Exactly. Union Pacific is only a few dollars off its high. It's held up very well, in large part because it's viewed as a domestic company, and everyone now is shifting to the U.S. because we are the best house in the neighborhood. So it's, it's not because we're so great, it's because the others are so lousy. But also their business is doing very well. They're returning uh, 
cash to the shareholders. They've increased their dividend fourfold over the past five okay. years in a, in a challenging economic so environment. So I will not say then the best looking horse in the glue factory. I won't use Aww. that analogy no. here, Aww. which is what Richard Fisher has said. All right, uh, you got some other picks, Liz, yeah. go ahead. With the, or the dog with the least fleas. That's Let's right. leave animals alone. All right, actually, let me stay with Hank here. You also like McDonald's. Uh, this is a stock that has right. come off its high, certainly, but there's a decent yield and you, you like Johnson & Johnson as well. What are your favorite points about right. these two names? Well, both of them are better than bond yields. So they both have dividend yields that exceed the yield on their own 10-year debt by a fairly substantial margin. So not only are you getting a better than bond yield, you're almost guaranteed growth of, in, uh, growth of income with dividend increases. And so the comparison between that and fixed income to us is a no-brainer. All right. We think that we think the fundamentals are improving there, and and we very high-quality situations in a challenging environment. I want to bring both of you guys in on this one because uh, even though we have one fixed income guy, and I want to focus Jim on the economy in general. Uh, unlike mm -hmm. 2000 and unlike 2008, when the economy was about to go into tailspin. The stock market is not overvalued. The price earnings ratio is very, very good. It looks, the stocks look like they have got their, their house as, as in as good as order as they've been in many, many decades. So even though the economy may look bad, the stocks are still holding up pretty well. Don't you think they will, even if the economy doesn't perform, Jim? I think they will. I, I wouldn't disagree with that, even though I'm a fixed income right. person. Um, as, as Hank just said, you can find any number of high-quality companies whose dividend uh, yield is higher than the yield on their bonds to find value. For those investors who need to be in fixed income, however, uh, to find value there, you, you go away from the top quality names and you go to, like I said earlier, a diversified portfolio of high yield, a diversified portfolio of, of municipals. But I wouldn't argue with the fact, uh, with the suggestion that over the second half of the year, uh, the equity market could very well outperform many segments of the bond market. Oh, we couldn't get them to fight, David. We did yeah, try. <laughs> Hank Smith and Jim Cohen. Nice Great guys. to see you both. We've got some breaking news. Earnings alert. Adam Shapiro, H&R Block. Yeah, and H&R Block's now trading down. Their fourth quarter results. Revenue came in at $2 billion, Liz. Street was expecting $2.01 billion. Earnings per share, though, disappointing. Uh, the Street expectation came in at $2.01 a share. Uh, the Street was expecting $2.05. Year over year, fourth quarter revenue actually fell roughly $45 million. Despite this, Bill Cobb, the uh, president and chief executive office, officer, said, quote, I'm very pleased that we served a record 25.6 million clients this year. Back to you, Liz. Okay. All right. And uh, the, it's down a little bit, but not a tremendous amount, even though it did miss its figures. Coming up, we have a member of the Federal Reserve who is never afraid of speaking his mind. Richard Fisher, head of the Dallas Fed, is going to tell us whether or not he thinks the current policy is creating a monetary cliff. And, That's speaking, next. Uh, and speaking of cliffs, what about an energy cliff? You saw what oil's been doing over the past three weeks. We've got a top strategist who says that is what the Fed is creating right now, and it's hurting the average American in the process? Lower oil and gas? We'll find out more on that. Also, Groupon shares down more than 50% this year. Is that ugly performance enough to scare another daily deal site from going public? The CEO of Living Social joining us in a Fox Business exclusive to tell us his plans for his company. And as we go to a break, let's take a look at today's S&P winners. Oh, baby, let the good time. The Closing Bell is sponsored by TD Ameritrade, where a smart game plan starts with smarter trading tools. What if you had thermal night vision goggles, like in a special ops mission? You'd spot movement, gather intelligence with minimal collateral damage. But rather than neutralizing enemies in their sleep, you'd be targeting stocks to trade. Well, that's what trade architects heat maps do. They make you a trading assassin. Trade Architect, TD Ameritrade's empowering web-based trading platform. Trade commission-free for 60 days, and we'll throw in up to $600 when you open an account. Tonight, immigration limitation. At 7, Arizona's ruling has it severely handcuffed law enforcement. Dobbs with answers. 
At 8, the highly anticipated healthcare verdict. A turning point in an election? Cavuto takes Mike Huckabee's political temperature. It's a can't-miss primetime lineup. This is New York State. We built the first railway, the first trade route to the West, the greatest empires. Then, some said we lost our edge. Well, today, there's a new New York State. One that's working to attract businesses and create jobs. The place where innovation meets determination and businesses lead the world. The new New York works for business. Find out how it can work for yours at thenewny.com. We're gonna get you. Cheeseburger? You know what? Any salads? Do you ball anyone? Oh! Thanks, girls. I'm really proud of you, Dad. Make the most of your network with Verizon. More 4G LTE coverage than all other networks combined. Over the years, I've won a Tony, a Grammy, an Oscar, a Golden Globe, two Emmys, and the National Medal of Arts, all with lousy eyesight. But now I see the world in Super Focus. With your regular prescription, order your Super Focus glasses with the astounding power to sharply focus at any distance near to far. For precise information, go to superfocus.com or call 1 800 900 3700. Now I see the world in Super Focus. And that's no bull, Penn. The Bunny Joshi, technology. Netbooks, laptops, desktops, and we have a tech bonanza. Charles Payne, money. This one had a whole lot of momentum. We want to start to help people make money. Expert insight, smart analysis, only on Markets Now, weekdays. We are about a minute away from the S&P futures closing, so let's head back to Larry Shover at the CME. So what will it be, a rally tomorrow or a fall once again? It's hard to say because the market's continually hamstrung with uh, headline risk. I mean, all Merkel had to say is, as long as I live, and the S&P's dropped five points. And the thing is, we all, know what, we, we all know what she means by that. I mean, no direct injection into Spain without controls, and that's the bottom line. I mean, let's not talk about pooling, mutualization, or sharing of debt until those controls are in place. And that's what the market needs. That's what the market's looking for. So I think it's going to be a lot more headline risk back and forth with nowhere to go right now. You get the sense we're just on the edge of something big happening, like we were before the Fed I meeting agree. last week. Yeah, maybe it's the health care bill. We will see. Thank you, Larry. Thanks, Larry. Well, H&R Block releasing 